And there it is. The, oh. the wall adjustment technique is beneficial in treating neck pain, shoulder blade pain, uh, mid-back pain, lower back pain. And the reason why it's so effective is there's no twisting dynamics that are being done on the spine. For instance, if I have a lower back case and they have a lot of lower back pain, if I put them on their side and twist their lower back, I can shear the disc and I can take a compressed disc and make it more narrowed. So over time, I can put that lower back disc in a more severe state. Through wall adjustments, it's a straight on force and there's no twisting dynamics. So it's really much healthier for the spine and it really helps to reduce uh, pain patterns from aggravating and making pain patterns worse. In the wall adjustment technique, we can adjust a patient standing and oftentimes we will adjust the patient sitting. And people will ask me the question, well, why do you adjust a person sitting? And the reason is a lot of times when people stand, they're in a defensive pattern, meaning they're backward in a curvature. They're towing out and locking their knees. And so when we go to adjust them up against the wall, we can bounce off the person and not get a very good release. When we sit that person down, they go into a forward curve, which means the energy is more exhausted. There's less resistance in the body, and that allows us to get far better releases when a person sits down. We sit a person down and use the seated wall adjustment technique, then we're really going to the root of that injury. And so if it is a seated injury, by doing a seated wall adjustment, we're able to get reduction in pain quicker, and we're able to reestablish a much more normal spinal curve quicker. So that's really the, the purpose between adjusting some patients in the seated position rather than adjusting them in the standing position. In injuries to the extremity, there is always an injury to the spine. So, so many doctors and physical therapists treat the injured extremity and in our work, we have found that there's a direct correlation. So every time there's an injury to an extremity, whether it be an ankle, a wrist, a knee, an elbow, a shoulder, there is an injury that also takes place to the spine. So if we're able to uh, specifically go to that area of the spine and give an adjustment, we're able to quickly improve the function of the injured extremity. So the doctors and physical therapists who are only working on the injured extremity, they are missing a vital component. And so what that means is if there is a ankle injury, there is an adjustment that needs to be done in the upper back area. If there's a knee injury, that adjustment needs to be done in the mid-back area. If there is a uh, hip injury, then there needs to be an adjustment in the lower back area. And so by, by adjusting the spine, we can quickly improve the injured extremity without ever touching the injured extremity. For wrist and ankle pain, if you have ever seen like a basketball player spraining their ankle, what you always find is when they sprain their ankle, their head whips back. What that means is the ankle gets sprained, but there's a fixation at the uppermost point in the upper back region. And so by adjusting the first thoracic vertebra up against the wall, we can immediately improve the function in the ankle. In elbow and knee pain, we adjust the middle part of the spine. We look at the most backward point on the side view x-ray. By adjusting that area of the spine, we can immediately reduce pain in the elbow and knee. What I have found to be really amazing is people who have had knee replacement. They come in to me following their knee replacement. I give them a couple adjustments in their mid-back region and they go back to their doctors and their doctors are amazed by the flexibility improvement that has taken place. So it's really a powerful way to immediately assess even in the most severe knee and elbow problems we can find um, with a simple adjustment immediate change in that pain pattern. In shoulder pain and shoulder blade pain we calmly adjust the C7 T1 area which is in the upper part of the back and we also usually adjust ribs that have subluxated in the shoulder blade region. 
So if it's a right shoulder, then what we do is we go into the rib region and we do a rib adjustment and that unlocks the pain in the shoulder. A side note on shoulder pain is usually the shoulder is so severe that you cannot use the injured shoulder. In our technique, we're able to use the healthy shoulder to adjust the ribs on the opposite side, thus helping the injured shoulder. In shoulder injuries, we commonly use the healthy arm. So if the right shoulder is injured, we will cross the left shoulder and then we'll use that arm to adjust the ribs that are out of place in the shoulder blade region. And by doing that, we can immediately improve the function in the shoulder. We can help to restore its normal function and normal range of motion. The main difference between a face down adjustment and a wall adjustment is the, the way the force is coming into the body. When a patient is laying face down on their stomach and the doctor pushes down on their back, oftentimes that will bring the curve forward. And whereas with a wall adjustment, we're coming from the front to the back, and so we're taking curves that are forward and we're bringing them backward. So we find that it's such a dramatic change between face down adjustments and wall adjustments. We find again that, that the body recovers much quicker, that pain patterns reduce quicker.